Hello and welcome to episode 84 of my Stellar Tactics tutorial Let's Play series. This episode will be on refining, mining and then the awesome trade net. Simply put, it is brilliant, but don't take my word for it, watch and decide for yourself. As of now, in my humble opinion, Elite has a true successor. Um, when I played Elite in 1984, I spent many hours playing it. I think it was 84, anyway, it was in the early 80s. Uh, I spent many hours playing it, but always thought to myself, wow, how much better this game could be if it wasn't just lines. Lines for planets, lines for spaceships, everything was just lines. Because at the time, of course, um, computer games were very basic. But anyway, things have moved on and now we have Stellar Tactics. My next goal in Stellar Tactics, to back up that, is to make 80 million and then showcase all the ships. But first let's show you how I will make that money. and. It's going to be through all the three things I've just mentioned to you. So we're going to start with refining. Now, if I go to the ship, <coughs> excuse me, you'll remember in previous episodes down this list, the one at the very bottom was always empty. The hard point here didn't have anything in it. This is the new addition to uh, Stellar Tactics refining. In here is where you're going to put your refining uh, machine. Now to buy the machine to start refining, you're going to go to the ship equipment vendor. So if I click on them, okay, so there's all the usual stuff in here. But if we keep scrolling down, we see now that there is basic ship wellers or refineries. And uh, because I wanted to test it out a bit and get the hang of it, I've obviously bought one already and fitted it. But if we take a look here, there is five basic uh, ore refineries. Uh, the one I've got, as you can see there, equipped, gives me efficiency of 56%. So it looks, I think these are all going to be 56 um, It's funny though, the last time I went in the shop, there was a rare in there so each time you exit the shop and go back in you have a chance of getting different items in the shops so I was going to demonstrate upgrading it but basically you just buy one from here switch to your ship and then drag and drop it to the hard point uh, slot which is just down here once you've done that you'll notice that there's an ore refinery button here now pay attention to the detail which is for the two ores I currently have look at the value so the value for the gypsum is 4 and for the asbestos is 5 but here is the beauty with the ore refinery if I now click on that you'll see that there is the two ores I've told you about so I'm going to click refine all ores that drops them both down here notice the price now I've only got a few of these because I just wanted a couple to demonstrate but imagine if I had a cargo hold full of either of these and look at the price it's going to give me so now that I've done that the next thing to do is to start the refinery and now it will start so you can see here now or being processed so that's now going to process that ore. And once it's been processed, then I'm going to be able to sell that and make a huge, huge profit. Just that alone. So that's refining. Great, fantastic update to Stellar Tactics. And you can see it's like everything else. It's so clear, clearly defined and so and it's just pure fun because now when you go mining the asteroid fields, you're going to be making a lot of money now you can see up here that I have been busy over the last couple of weeks since the update was launched and uh, it's just great for making money all of these new things that have been added to Stellar Tactics so I'm gonna leave that refining uh, right okay so that is the refining not a ton to go over really because uh, 
it's just a couple of things to show. Next, let's talk about mining. And um, mining is the is going to be even more brief than the refining. Although I appreciate a lot of people like things to be quick and simple, and that's what this episode is. Okay, so mining next. Since the addition of the drone, the the uh, let's bring it up. In actual fact, the uh, drones. Okay, since you now deploy them. You'll notice once you've deployed some drones that over time your um, crew member who is so let's bring up the crew manager remember it's the M key the person who is in the weaponry station you will notice over time oh look the refinings completed so let's just finish explaining this we can go take a look Whoever you've got crew member wise in the weaponry station, they will get experience, mining experience, for your mining drones. So if I select Nana, and if we look down here, you'll see her mining. She started off on one, I think. She had one point in mining. Um, but since the drones have been mining and she keeps getting experience, she's now at 11. Now, You'll notice before I had these different crew members for different a couple of the, the ship tasks. Something you may want to consider is putting your ground crew members into your ship crew as well. The reason for that is the developer mentioned in the latest update that he's added the mining perks. So it just makes life easier for checking the mining perks. Um, because if you've got crew members who aren't in your ground crew, when you go into your character to see the different skills that they've got, you can't view your space crew. Uh, statistics only your ground crews so if we switch to Nana and her mining's 11 now we can see the perks as they open up she obviously doesn't have enough points in mining yet it's only 11 so if we click on that rock laser button what more is there to know <laughs> lots and you've just started to understand the basics so by putting Nana in our ground crew in um, the ship uh, my, uh, in the ship uh, for mining we can now see the perks as she unlocks them um, I mean I could swap uh, swap out the crew members in the crew manager but it just makes life easier I intend to stick with the crew that I've got and so it just makes sense to have them in my ship so there we go that's uh, the what I wanted to mention about the mining the developers now added perks for mining and you get experience now for mining um, so there we go and of course knowing that it's the weaponry station which your staff member gets the mining experience for so there we go <clears throat> right okay so I think that's all I wanted to cover with that let's have a look Yeah, that says it's still being processed. I thought it said it finished. Right, okay, well, never mind about that. Right, on to then the glorious trade net. So let's have a look at the trade net. For that, we're going to go to the um, log screen, which is the L key, of course. And up here now, when you used to click on this button, nothing happened. But if I click on the trade net now, you will see that we get this panel appear now just to quickly go over the buttons over here the first button shows everything in the list all the trade goods all the ores and all the refined ores next it's the list of all the trade goods that you can buy and sell within stellar tactics and my oh my there is absolutely a ton of different uh, items you can trade with next is the refined ores and again there's a ton of different ores and lastly there is the unprocessed ores and gases so that's all in that list and again there is a ton okay lastly there is where all the systems you've placed beacons in so that's now listing every system that I've placed a beacon in this is work in progress because obviously 
it's that the update's only been out a couple of weeks and I have spent 50 hours, over 50 hours in the last couple of weeks um, playing this and putting down beacons. Um, when I tend to visit a system I like to do a bit more than just place a beacon so hence why I've only got this many but it's enough to demonstrate the trade net, the glorious trade net. So okay up here of course it's telling us how much money I've got, how much cargo I've got in my hold. Now that's good that I've just mentioned that because when you start playing Stellar Tactics and you start trading there's something very important to bear in mind and that is you're starting on a basic ship and you've got a tiny amount of cargo capacity. So let's now demonstrate what I'm talking about. If I go to the ship vendor Okay, and we'll notice there's different ships in this list. What we're looking at is the cargo holds. So that one's pretty useless. That one is useless. Oh, but look at that one. That one has a cargo hold of 10,000. What about this one? This one has a cargo hold of 32,000. And trust me when I tell you, you can get ships where it gets even a lot more than that. So my point being, at the moment, with our basic ship, it only has a small cargo hold. So you can barely trade any amount of resources. But as you get better ships, <clears throat> you will be able to trade a lot more than what we're currently going to be able to trade. But let's demonstrate with my small hold what I can trade okay so going back continuing on over this then so where you see a green up arrow that means you're gonna make money the reason you're gonna make money is because they're either buying or selling they're either buying for more than the market average or they're either selling or less than the market average so you will make more money when you buy them off the goods off of them if they're selling for less than the market average and if you then sell them goods somewhere where they're selling the goods for more than the market average you're going to make even more money so I'm going to demonstrate of all these items in this list I will demonstrate let's see we're gonna do medical supplies because that's a good thing is it not Okay, so you can see over here you've got all contracts, buy orders and sell orders. So we're going to start in the sell orders. <clears throat> One thing to check when you're buying and selling your goods. Um, a, pr a, a golden rule to this is you might be tempted to take up a buy order because you see that a particular item, they want to buy loads of that item and they're giving a very good price for it. Do not do that because you may not, you might set up that buy order for so many 2,000 units. But remember, our ship can only hold 215 units, I think, or 224 units. I've got a little <clears throat> cargo in there at the moment, so it's 208 units. So if you go placing a buying order for 2,000 units and you can only fit 200 units in there, one, have you got the money to complete that order? Because that will come to a lot of money. And two, you're going to have to do many trips back and forth because you're simply not going to be able to fit. So just be careful. Be wary of doing a buying order. The way to do it is to do a sell, to buy your goods first using the sell order. That way it lets you know how many goods you were able to afford and how many you fitted in your cargo hold. Then when you're doing your buy order, you'll know exactly how many units, because they'll show down here, as you're going to see in a moment, how many you can sell. So let's go to the um, sell orders I've selected medical supplies first of all so that's the only goods it's showing in this list and it's showing all the different systems where I've placed a beacon and it's telling us whether they're the agricultural station or an outpost or an industrial station it's telling us all the details we need to know here now one thing I have noticed but it doesn't always prove true and that is usually when you're buying goods under the sell orders the lowest prices normally start at the top and as you go down 
the prices in fact it I don't know it tends to randomize but occasionally that proves true the best prices are always at or is it for the buying orders it's very randomized the only thing that is important to you is making sure it has this green at point arrow pointing down because it's selling for less than the market average so the arrows down if you were buying goods you'll notice the green arrows pointing up because they're selling for more than the market average so sell orders and I can only fit 208 units so that's all I can buy so I'm looking for the cheapest so 8387 so that's the best one there. Afgaf 4 is selling at the best price. So what I'll now do, select that uh, good, come down here to where it's got the little slider. I can either use the slider, although it's far better to use this. So you click in there, remove that, and I'm going to say 208. That's going to cost me 1,744,496 credits. So you can imagine if I was doing an order for 5,000 of these units, you're talking a lot of money. And I don't have that much money. But I do have a little. I have been busy. So let's accept that order. Okay, so it's taken my money. All right, you heard the chink of it taking my money you can see now that down here a contract's been set up so it's a pickup that means I've got to go and get the goods they may have taken my money but they haven't given me anything yet I need to now travel to that system and pick the goods up well because I've placed a beacon there it's a piece of cake so don't go sweating over that okay it's telling us what goods I'm trading I'm buying because I'm picking them up the location the number of units and all importantly the price because you always want to know how much you've paid per unit okay so now that we have a location we're gonna I could go to the buy orders and do that but I'm gonna go and pick the goods up first and then we will look into selling them so the next thing to do is if we look in the ship you'll notice there's nothing in here yet no goods we're going to go and get them. So I'll select the person who's got my teleporter. And we're going to go back to the ship and we're going to head to that system. The most wonderful thing about the Tradener is as you keep exploring the different star systems, uh, the new star systems that you come across, uh, if they have a trading station or trading services because they have different names the places you can trade from if they have trading services you can just keep growing and growing your trade net it's just so awesome okay so we're going to look for the nearest jump point and I've got a very good pro tip coming up a bit later on where to place your beacons so right let's head to this At the moment, for some reason, you can um, do a micro warp even when you're in the gravity field. I'm sure that'd be sorted out, but it's a lovely little bonus for the moment, and I'm going to sure use it while I can. I should always power my shields on because I get frequently attacked. Okay, we're within range. Okay, so before I choose the system, I'm sure it was AFGAF or something like that. Let's just have a quick look. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. I keep doing the wrong one. So, yeah, the name of it was AFGAF, yeah. AFGAF 4. So we're going to click on the translocate. There is the star system. Let's now translocate. FTL drive engaged.
Oh, enemies. Let's turn my shielding on. Okay, so there's the outpost there. I'm not even going to fight. I'm just going to, because this episode isn't about uh, fighting. I love the fighting, but this episode is about the glorious trade net. So as you can see, if you get jumped in combat, it's easy enough to get away. Yeah, it's always usually around the other side of the planet. Gone are the days of me trying to fly through planets and blow my ship up. Okay, so we've got them goods that we bought. How and where do we get them from? Well, first of all, we find the trading station. You remember it was number four listed on. So Docking. let's dock. And when you dock, there will be a storage uh, location. So if I click on that, uh, so a cargo storage. So it says no trade good items for delivery at this station. And yet it's showing the medical supplies there. That's because I haven't, uh, I'm not selling anything to them. That's what that's probably talking about. But I'm going to grab my trade goods. So you can either use the slider or double click. Or you can, not slider, you can use the transfer button. Or if you just double left click. And then, so you see that they're in the cargo storage there. Move them across and transfer. There you go. They're now in my cargo hold. So I've picked up the medical supplies. Now I will go back to the trade net and we can look where to sell them at. So we're going to go to buy orders. Uh, you notice a chunk of my money gone down. So now we want to find the best price for, buy for buying. Uh, we need to make sure that we select medical goods first, of medical supplies first of all. Okay, and I chose medical supplies because you'll notice there's always loads of people selling them and always loads of people buying them. Now we want to find the best, the highest price. So that's 8573. That's increased a little, 84. That's even better. Do you see how the price is increasing as we go down? It's getting better. It's not always true, to, true but I have noticed a lot that that does occur. So 608, that looks like it's the best. Yeah, so that's the best, and that's Makuha, however you pronounce that. So I need to sell them 208. So I'll type that in, except we now have a delivery contract of the medical supplies to this star system and its orbital base. That's the number of units and that's how much it's going to pay me and we're going to go there and do some selling okay let's come out of this station the cargo storages are always near the entrance if you've got the wrong location you will either not see a cargo storage there or it may be that uh, the cargo you thought you was picking up are not there. That tells you then you've got the wrong 
location because in some star systems they have more than one place that you can trade and sell at so don't let that worry you it always tells you the exact location you just have to check right okay so now we need to go back to a jump point so let's find the nearest jump point there it is now that is no coincidence that the jump point the nearest one is only 21,219 uh, kilometers away the reason it is no coincidence and this is the pro tip I was talking about earlier when you're laying your beacons do not just lay lay a beacon at any jump point find where the trading station is that you will be doing the trading in that star system and go to that trading station and then select nearest jump point once you've done that go to that jump point and then place your beacon and then what that will do is always allow a really close um, exit from that system for you so it just saves you time and as you're going to be traversing thousands of star systems if you can save time then that is a very good thing okay now the name of it I cannot forget because it's so hard to pronounce so that's where we're going FTL drive engaged and remember I've only got a tiny cargo hold at the moment but eventually I'm going to have a massive cargo hold and so I'll be able to do some serious trading. My one hope and wish for the future is that there is lots of things that we can buy and sell in the future that is worth a lot of money because um, it's nice to be able to buy new toys I mean the first thing is the ship that I'll be buying I might mute my phone because it's ringing a bit much sorry about that right okay so we're in the right system let's put my shields on and let's look at the order so number one orbital so it's there the Gunter Ranch that's a really pretty planet over there or star I should say trying to avoid the gravity fields because they will s slow me down use the afterburners to get close and then dock docking Okay, right, so here we are at the location for us to sell. Again, there is a cargo hold, so we click on that. And down here it tells us delivery of 208 units of medical supplies to this station for a total value of. Okay, so let's double click the trade goods, move them across like that, and transfer. We don't get any money yet. But as soon as I click on that, you'll hear the cha-ching. Um, you can purchase cargo storage, but I don't advise it because um, if you don't purchase it and you're not at the right station, it won't let the, you put the goods in there. It'll give, come up with a message telling you. you to, but if you purchase the cargo storage space, that will allow you then to move goods there and you won't know if it's the right or wrong. Oh, 
trust me just don't purchase this just yet maybe in the future but not the moment so there we go now I'm going to close this and there you go we just made a ton of money let's have a look so now we've got 8,289,152 credits. I wasn't exactly sure how much money. I can't remember how much I had before that. But let's go back to the trade now and do another trade. And we'll trade in something different this time. So let's maybe trade in something which will be... So we want to go... I'm going to try AI components. Let's have a look at them. So sell orders. So there's two systems selling and I'll be able to buy at a profit price 2763 is the best and so yeah and there's plenty that are buying so what I'm going to do is this one here let's get 208 Okay, and what you can do now, what I can do, is I could sell. The prices are locked. When you do the orders, um, so when I do that buy order, that price will never change. That's now locked in the contract. So I can now, now that I've done bought the goods and I know how many I can fit in my hold, now I can do the buy order as well. So I know where to go to buy them. So let's have a look. Well, we're going for the best price. So eight three oh three seven. That's the best price. So what we're going to do is do set up the buy order as well. And that shows you then the amount of profit that we're going to make now if it wasn't just a tiny amount 208 uh, it would make a huge it would make we'd make a lot of money but because it's only 208 units you're not really seeing a ton of profit but once we get a bigger uh, cargo hold then that's going to be a different story so right we need to go to weeks four so let's come out of here Oh, right, okay, they're saying that we're going to get attacked. Um, but we need to just quickly go to the nearest jump point. Before it starts getting ugly. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So I know where we need to go to there, that system. FTL drive engaged. Right, okay, let's have a look. So it was four, if I remember correctly, that outpost there. Let's get going. You can see there's lots of combat now. I think they know that I've got, I'm rich, and they all want a piece of me.
This was uh, when I set up this beacon, it was before I'd realised about placing the beacons near to the um, trading station. So there you go, lesson learned, look at that, it was 70 odd thousand kilometres away. It just took longer to, to get to it. And I've noticed now I can scan at a tremendous distance. I think I scanned at a hundred thousand kilometers away. It used to be just fifty-five thousand, but now I've I've, well, I've not met a limit for how far I can scan. Docking. Really cool. I think it's to do with the skills that I'm improving. Yeah, now that I'm making serious money, I thought uh, I didn't want someone asked previously could I just spawn in a ship and demonstrate it. Well, no, I'm going to do it the proper way. I'm going to earn the money, buy the ships, and then demonstrate each ship in a different episode. Right, so here's the cargo hold. There's my goods. Let's grab them. There we go. <clears throat> now we need to go sell them which was oh that's a really weird name but yeah that's where we're going number five alt five so let's just call it Right, let's bring up the system, put my shields on. Nearest jump point. We need to go now to there. Bolt it up. That's what it looks like. FTL I know it's not, but engaged. that's just what comes to mind. Right, shields, and we need to go to that outpost. I always like to scan ships because it does improve the uh, crew member skill ever so slightly, as you can see. Plus it's nice to see who's about.
docking. So let's sell these AI components. Right, let's have a look. Where is the cargo hold? There it is. Okay, so move them in. And make the cell. So I made a little money. I mean, I say a little, what was it, a hundred and something thousand profit. Um, and that's the way it goes. Uh, as I improve my ship, I will be able to do bigger trades. And by doing bigger trades, you will notice much better and bigger profits. Um, but that's the trade net. Totally wonderful, full, totally awesome. And what I should be doing over the coming episodes is placing down more beacons to open up more systems to trade in and once i reach my target of 80 million um the reason i set 80 million because so far the most expensive ship i've seen i think was 75 million and i need about 5 million for upgrades so 80 million once i've reached that then what i can do is then go through buying the different ships and um, demonstrating their abilities and what I want to do is to get a big ship a cargo with a big cargo hold of at least 30,000 units you probably need millions though to trade at that when you've got a bigger cargo hold but then that's the wonderful thing of it slowly increasing your cargo hold so you can trade and make more money but here we are the wonderful trade net I hope you've enjoyed this episode. There's been some great changes to Stellar Tactics. It is just such an awesome game. Wherever you are in the world, God bless you and keep you safe. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.